like that morning smile. Yeah, you know why I'm smiling? Mm, why? Oh, I was just dreaming about the two of us making love. Oh, that's funny. I just had the same dream. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. Was it nice? Yeah, it was in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> It was terrific, actually. But I like it when I'm awake. Me too. Mm. I'll get rid of him. Hey. I'll be right back. <laughs> Who's there? Me, Sarah. It's me, Sarah. Come on Hi. In. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you guys were still in bed. Sarah. Look, Megan, you've got to get dressed and come to the hospital. Why? Is there something wrong with Vicky? Sweetheart, I'm having a little bit of a problem. I have to... I have to make a decision about your rehabilitation program. Now, all the doctors here, they want... They want you to go to a rehab center in Seattle. And I'm trying to tell them that you can get better faster right here. You know, we've always counted on our love for each other, getting us through any, any crisis. And it always has. It's always worked for us. And I know it will this time, too. I just need you to let me know that... that you think I'm doing the right thing. Just... just squeeze my hand and let me know that you... that you think I'm doing the right thing, that you... that you can understand me. And that you have confidence that that with the love and support of your family, you can whip this thing. I'm ready. I just hope I can keep from crying. Tina, come on, you can't apologize for your feelings. Yeah, I know. I'm just afraid every time I see Vicky, I just keep crying. She's gonna start to get a little upset about it. I'll tell you what, why don't you take a deep breath? Together, we should be able to cheer her up. Now, listen, I gotta run over to the bay and I can take care of a few things over there, and then I'll meet you at the hospital, okay? Okay. What's this? Oh, it's uh, a paper that Herb sent over. What paper? It's for the preliminary hearing tomorrow. The one that will hopefully put Johnny away for good, him and all those other lowlifes. Herb sent this over. It's a list of all the questions that he thinks Johnny's lawyers are gonna be asking us at the hearing. I mean, this is it. This is our big chance to do something, put Johnny away. I can't do this. Here's what to do when you don't find the rainbows in this time. Here's where you go when it looks like the rain won't win. Don't cry. Take a chill pill, things aren't all that bad. They're worse. Every bank in town has turned me down, every single one of them. I have a great idea. Why don't you take the bar back? Please take it back. You could start a chain of Max's place. I don't want the bar. I want my paper back, all right? Uh -huh. Hey. I have been trying to call you all day. Oh, God. Everything okay? Hey, no, is everything all right with you? I heard about the fire. Hey, me and fire are friends. Stop it. Are y'all all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. No one got hurt this time. Okay, good. I just, uh, wanted to tell you, I know you're gonna have to start rebuilding soon, right? Yeah, yeah. I just gotta get a bank to give me some money. No, you don't need a bank. You need money. You come to me for it. How much do you need? Max, give the woman a figure. She already has a wonderful figure. Max. Now, I, I'm sorry. It's really sweet of you to offer, but I can't take money from you. Why? Because of Michael? 
Michael's money? No, no, because you're doing great things with your money already. I mean, like Blaugrub, Outlook House Clinic, the Max, whole thing. Max, do you have any idea how much money that man left me? I make more money in a month on interest than I could make as a nurse in an entire lifetime. <laughs> Plus, uh, anyway, I'm selling Landview Grand Hotels, so... No, no, back up, back up. You're selling land, you grant why? Yeah, well, this corporation wrote me a letter and they're gonna offer me $10 million for it, so... Hey, hey, the hotel is worth a lot more than $10 million. Yeah, Come I on. know, I know. I just want to get rid of it, and if they want to buy it, I'm selling it. Without the fun of negotiating for a better price? Now, come on. I, I have a reason, you know? I'm gonna go wait on some tables. I tell you, I love waiting on tables. Oh, Max, Dan just has this big hang-up about Michael's money, and that's all we do is fight about it, and I am sick of it. So, if I sell that hotel and that's one less thing we have to fight about, I don't care if I make money, lose money, whatever. I just want to make Dan happy. Happy, happy. I got a proposition that will make everyone happy, including me. Well, what happened? Did she have another stroke? Did she have a heart attack? No, no, she's okay. Oh, she's better? Is she walking? Talking? No, no, unfortunately nothing's changed. What do you mean nothing has changed? I mean, her condition must have improved. What does that mean? Look, it doesn't mean anything. It just means she's gonna need a lot of therapy to help her get along. But wait, she's already working with therapists, right? Yeah, right, but suddenly there's this difference of opinion about what to do next, and that's why Bo and Asa want to have a family meeting. Where, at the hospital? Yeah, right. Well, Clint won't leave Vicky's side, so that's what's going to have to be. Oh, what's the problem? Larry wants to have Vicky sent to a rehab center in Seattle. When? As soon as possible. It's just that Clint is dead set against it. Well, I agree with him. I don't think we should be sending her off to some strange place. I mean, she's not going to know what's going on. No, I don't think Larry would be pushing it if he thought it was a bad idea. Well, is he the only one that wants it? No, Bo and Asa and Renee think it's a good idea, and so do I. Well, I don't know. If, if I were Vicky, I would want my whole family around me. Yeah, well, why don't you hold off making a decision until after we get there, okay? Yeah, all right. When is this meeting taking place? As soon as you can get to the hospital. Will you come with me? Sure. You go get dressed. I'll make some coffee okay. for us. an unbelievable situation, especially for Clint. I mean, I wish I knew some way to help him. Now tell me something. Did you get one of these things at your house from Herb? It's a, a questionnaire or something. He thinks Johnny's lawyer's gonna be asking this stuff? Yeah, we got it. We've already been over it a couple times. I don't know how to help Clint or Vicky, but I do know we're gonna make Johnny pay for this one. Tina, what are you talking about? It's just a list of simple questions. All you have to do is give Herb simple answers. Court, they're not simple questions. I mean, they're traps. They're all too personal. They're about my relationship with Johnny. I... Tina, nobody blames you for having to spend all that time with Johnny on Batterley. I mean, you were just doing that to save our lives. I know. I mean, but that's not the reason that I was there in the first place. I mean, you guys came to shoot a TV movie, but I was there because I was trying to get Johnny to help me fix my gambling debts. I mean, do you know how embarrassed I feel about that, Court? Tina, you didn't know that the man was a criminal, did you? Oh, of course I didn't, but that's not the point. Besides, there's something worse about it, too. Oh? What's the worst, Tina? Uh, oh, um, Vicky's gonna lose all faith in me if she finds out that Johnny proposed to me and CJ's going to hate me when he's old enough to understand that his mom went away with a criminal because she had gambling debts. First of all, Vicky and CJ are never going to stop loving you. And they'll probably be happy and proud that you helped put Johnny and Dee away forever. And I'm sure that Herb is going to do whatever he can to protect you when you're up in the stage. Yeah, you know? but can Herb stop Johnny's lawyer from asking these personal questions? I don't think he can, Court. I just can't do this. I'm not going to do this. All right, look, Tina, yeah, you made a big mistake by going to Batterley with Johnny, but I've forgiven you for that. And I'm sure that Vicky and CJ will forgive you, too, Tina. They're not going to forgive me. Tina, why? You didn't do anything wrong. I mean... You spent some time with the men. Yeah, it was a bad judgment call for you to be there in the first place, but you helped keep him distracted when we tried to destroy the drug lab and when we tried to foil a murder attempt on Vicky. 
But Tina, come on, what else did you do? You had dinner at the man's table a couple times. You went out to the beach with him a few times. And you accepted a ring. Hey, Tina, everybody will understand that. Court, I have to tell you something that I haven't told you. Oh, you're probably gonna kill me, but I did something much worse than accept Johnny's ring. I mean, it was much worse than that. Well, mm. Tina, what happened? What happened between you and Johnny that you haven't told me about yet, Tina? Damn it, you don't just drop something like that in my lap and then turn around and say, never mind. I know. So what is it? I... Tell me the truth, no, Tina, I... the truth. No, and I will try my best to understand. I, um... I let Johnny believe that I was in love with him, and I let him think that I would really marry him. I know that, Tina. You, you already told me that. I mean, yes, you were trying to string the man along, trying to gain his trust. So he said, will you marry me? And you said, yeah, sure, whatever you say. Yeah, but I mean, I, 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 it, was, it was not quite like that. It was that I, um, I told him I loved him. And, and, and I... That's why he keeps talking about having a future with me, because he really believes that he can have a future with me. That's why, Cord. Well, why did you need for him to continue to believe something like that? No, oh, God, Cord, because I just... I got all caught up in the danger of the situation, and I just, um... I was so afraid that I was going to do the wrong thing and that everybody was going to get it found out, and so I just, um... I don't know, he kept pressuring me, and I just... I just... I just told him everything that he wanted to hear. To protect us? Yeah, of course to protect you. Come on, man, that guy, he gives me the creeps. Gee, Tina, I... I wish you didn't have to go that far. Of course. Listen, you did what you had to do. I don't like it, but I guess I understand. God, Court, if I could just change the last couple of weeks, I would. Yeah, I know, Tina. There's a lot of things I'd change, too. But I guess we can't. No. So I guess what we do is we call Herb and we tell him that... Johnny thinks you're madly in love with him. There's no telling what he's going to say in court. Well, Johnny will probably say whatever he needs to say to keep his tail out of prison. Court, what if everything he says is about me? I mean, what if all his lies are about me? I... I just can't do this, Court. Look, Yumbo. Yumbo can do it. You guys, you guys can nail him. I can't. That's a good idea, Court. Come on. Well, I'm sorry, Tina, but if you don't testify against him, I'm sure his lawyer's gonna make a real big deal out of that. Well, I don't care. I mean, I... I can't put Vicky through this again. I just can't, Cord. Vicky is in the hospital right now because she was shot. I know. All right, because Johnny ordered her assassination. Okay, Cord, you don't have to remind me about that. Obviously, I, know that. I do, Tina. Obviously, I do need to remind you about this. What would Vicky say to you right now, Tina? If she were here, what would she say? She would probably say, Tina, you gotta do everything in your power to make sure that this man never hurts anybody again. Now, you know she would say that. I know she would. Okay. So you got to testify against Johnny D. You got to go in there and you got to tell Herb everything that happened on Batterley, Tina. Because if you don't, Johnny D is going to walk away free and clear. Do you want that? No. Okay. 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 Good. So, uh, the judge will get enough evidence to say that Johnny should stay in trial, and I'm sure that Herb will have Johnny convicted. Right. Then you won't have to worry about him anymore, Tina. Tina, come on. 
triple X. The hearing isn't until tomorrow. Listen, I gotta get over to the band. I got some stuff to do. I'll meet you at the hospital, okay? Sweetheart, I know it's going to take you some time to recover. I just don't want you getting depressed or discouraged. And, and you just do everything you can to, to work with your therapist. Now, let's see what the kid sent you. Well, this one's from Jessica. You see, this is, this is the swimming pool. And this is Jessica swimming. And you can see she doesn't even have her water wings on. I'll tell you, she's awful proud of herself, honey. She's, she's about ready to pop a button. And she really wants you to, to see her for yourself. Little Joey wanted you to see what his camp looked like, so. You know, this isn't too shabby, is it? And we might have a little artist right there in the family. See, this is a lake back here. And there's Joey, and, and the cabins are over here in the woods. Let's see what Kevin's got for you. Oh, no, this, this is the front of land fair. And you see, he's got a sign across the whole front of the house and he says hi mom we love you well I'll just tape these up on the wall where you can see them. hi honey oh hi there hi there I am the bearer of gifts I have brought you bed jacket. Oh. <laughs> Renee, that's beautiful. Isn't it, sweetheart? <sighs> oh, thanks, Renee. She's going to enjoy wearing that. I sure hope so. And now, um, if you don't mind, I'd like to borrow your fella for just a few minutes, and I promise I'll bring him right back. Renee, I was visiting with Vicky. I was telling her about the kids. Well, they need to talk to you about some forms. There's some confusion about them. Well, can't I do that while Vicky is napping? No, they need to talk to you right now. Okay. Sweetheart, I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Asa and Bo are waiting for you outside. They want to talk to you about the rehab plan. Uh, forget it. I'm not changing my mind. Clint, darling, please just talk to them. Bye-bye, sweetheart. I got you a better offer. Would you be willing to, I don't know, let's say, pay me 10% of anything over $15 million if I put a deal together for you? You know somebody who's going to pay that much? Maybe, maybe not. All right. All right. If you take commission. <laughs> We're partners. <laughs> OK, that's great. But I mean it, Max. If you need money, you come to me. You don't go no, to the No, 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 no. Like I told you before, I like to earn my money. I like to work. And like I said before, there's something in it for everyone. I mean, I can help you. We save the intruder. And Stephen got himself a rich uncle after all. Yeah. <laughs> Who 
There's nothing to discuss. I know what's best for my wife. Clint, maybe this time we should listen to the doctors. They're experts in this sort of thing. Oh, experts? If they were such experts, where were these damned experts when she had a stroke? Huh? Why? If they're such experts, why in the hell did they prevent it? Clint, there was no warning. It happened too fast. You can't blame them. I'll tell you who you blame. You blame that Johnny D. He ordered the hit on Vicky. If she wasn't shot, none of this would be happening. Well, I'd like two minutes with that fella. Just no, two minutes. Don't worry. We're going to get him. Right now, we have to decide what's best for Vicky. We? Why does, it, why does everyone here seem to think that they have a vote in this? We have a right to vote. Vicky's family. We care, too. I'll make the decision, Paul. You're not capable of making a decision this important right now. What do you mean, I'm not capable? Clint, darling, you have been at this hospital day and night. You're worn out. And seeing Vicky this way is, is tearing you apart. All of that makes it very, very hard to be objective. You are the ones that aren't being objective. She hasn't gotten over the damn gunshot wound yet. That's what's holding her back. She gets over that, she'll fight this little stroke thing. I know she will. She'll get her speech back, she'll be able to move again. Well, we hope to God that's exactly what happens. Well, then why don't we wait and see before we send her out across the country? Larry doesn't want to wait. He thinks that she needs aggressive therapy now. He says this rehab center offers excellent therapy. They have some of the best psychologists in the world. She doesn't need a shrink. Darling, Larry says that with strokes, it's very common to have depression. Fine, so we hire a psychologist. Look, being around the kids and family will do more to cheer Vicky up than being around a bunch of strangers out in Seattle. Darling, she needs physical therapy. She needs speech therapy. This center specializes in rehabilitating stroke victims, Clint. I'm telling you that Vicky needs to be around people who love her. That's very important to her, Bo. She gets strength and a, and a purpose for a living by being around family. Out in Seattle, she's gonna be around a bunch of damn strangers. Now, if she could speak, I know what she'd say. She'd say she wants to stay right here. Fine, Clint. We'll hire a therapist and psychologist to work with Vicky Land there. I'll get a list of the best people in the country from Larry. I'll fly them in. They'll stay here as long as Vicky needs them. She'll be with her children and get the best medical help. Well, I think that that seems like a very good solution. All right. You know, there's something we're not even considering right now. Now what? Well, every time you walk in that room and you see Vicky lying there, doesn't that just tear you apart? No. What does that have to do with our decision? How's that going to affect the kids? Vicky's sick, Bo. They know she's sick. Vicky's been sick before. Yeah, but not like this. How are you going to explain to little Jessica that her mama can't just smile at her and pick her up and hold her and talk to her or even understand her? Well, maybe we could get a psychologist to work with the kids. Well, the Megan's right. I think the sooner that the kids start dealing with this, the better off everyone will be. Oh, could I say something here? Why not? Everyone else has. Fine, fine. I'll stay no, out no, of it. Wait, wait. Okay, look. We know that you're upset. We're all upset. You're not the only person that loves Vicky and wants the best for her. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? Clint, um, have you forgotten how important it was to you that you regained some of your independence before you went back to your family? Now, maybe... Vicky would like a chance to pull herself together a little bit before she goes back to the kids. That's a good point. Honey, listen, she's going to get intense therapy at this center. And then when she comes home, it's going to be easier on her. It's going to be easier on the kids. Yeah, I mean, who knows? She may improve dramatically while she's out there. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Let me take care of this insurance thing, and I'll... I'll think about it. I'll talk to him. Our targets are together. It's now or never. Mom, hmm? I've got to ask you something. Mom, what are you doing? I got the insurance thing all straightened out, sweetheart. And uh, we had a family meeting. You remember that rehabilitation center I was telling you about? Well, we had a little trouble deciding what was going to be best for you, whether you should go out there or whether you should stay here in Landview. Yeah, we had a long talk, and we examined the pros and the cons. And what we decided was, uh, that it probably would be best for you to go out to the center. 
Clint has a, a brochure. Show her the brochure. It's uh, kind of like one of those fancy resorts. You can have a suite all to yourself with a great view, and uh, Larry said that there would be therapists there to help you with anything that you needed. And I'll be going out with you. There's no way I'd let you go out there by yourself, honey. I'm going to be with you every step of the way. And Asa said that he would fly the kids out to see you, and Bo promised to make my taping schedule at Fraternity Royal Wheel Light so I could see you as much as possible as well. Now, Paul's going to be uh, kind of running a regular shuttle between here in Seattle. That way, everyone in the family is going to be able to take turns coming out to see us. It's going to be as if you never even left home. It wasn't an easy decision to make, honey, but we had to do what we thought was best for you. And I really, I really think we made the best choice. I'll, I'll visit you real soon. I'm going to miss you, but I know that uh, that the therapists out there are going to take really good care of you, and you're going to get well. And besides, look, you have your return a pin, and it'll work for you the way it worked with everyone else. Hope, love, success. Remember, I love you. How'd you talk Clinton to send Vicky to that center, Pa? I laid it on the line, Bo. Told him to stop being so ornery, stop trusting doctors. Tears me up as much as him. Our goal is to help Vicky recover. I think some counseling at that rehab center would do Clint some good also. Hi. Herb, Hi, how's Herb. Vicky? Unfortunately, no change. Well, I think you'll be glad to know the hearing's been moved up to this afternoon. Why? Uh, the judge who's conducting the hearing has to go out of town tomorrow, so it's either today or postponed for two weeks. I figured the sooner the better. Yeah, I agree. Have you gone over the questions I sent you? Yeah, Bo and I have. Good. So we uh, uh, Yeah, I was hoping we'd have time to review them, but now there's no time left. Yes. There's a call for you. Thank you. Excuse me. Well, Herb, you have our statements. Yeah. I mean, you've got enough to incriminate Johnny, right? Yes, we have a solid case, Jake. Uh, Johnny's lawyer is he's tough, he's mean, he hits below the belt. He'll do everything in his power to shock you, to, to confuse you. Oh, great. <laughs> no, he's not going to shock us. No, I'm just, I'm not sure Megan is in any kind of condition to be put through the ringer. No, she'll be able to handle it. All she has to do is look at Johnny. Remember how he had us lined up at Batterly? Ordered those guys to kill us. That's all it'll take. Now just remember what Johnny D did to Vicky. We're going to send that man to Statesville, her, for the rest of his life. Why does my lawyer want to see me again? I just... <laughs> I'm telling you, it's fake. I was just thinking about you, and boom, there you are. <laughs> uh, I don't think he approves of hugging. Oh, come on. Friska, she's not carrying any hardware. Tina, give me her purse. Here, hold on to this. Johnny, hmm? I have to talk to you about something really important. Okay, I'm listening. I gotta ask you a favor. I mean, a, a really big favor. Name it. I want you to promise me that no matter what, you won't tell anybody that we slept together on Batterley. <laughs> <laughs> 